All right, I'm going to work an example of using the normal distribution to approximate the binomial. So what we have to remember is that binomial distributions are discrete distributions. The normal distribution is a continuous distribution. So we have to adjust for that first, and then we can solve just like all of the regular normal curve problems. All right, so we're going to look at um, a four-leaf clover problem. The probability of finding a four-leaf clover is 10%. It's probably a huge exaggeration, but um, if we take a random sample of 100 clovers, what's the probability that a person will find more than 10 four-leaf clovers in this sample? It's a binomial distribution because it's either a success or a failure. 10% probability we find one. 90% 90 probability that we don't. Because n times p, the number in our sample times the probability of success, is greater than 5, we can go ahead and make the assumption of normal distribution and proceed to follow the process to transform this from binomial to normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow I'm going to actually take four steps. I'm first going to transform the binomial parameters to the parameters of the normal distribution, apply continuity correction factor, calculate my z-score, and then solve. When we talk about the binomial parameters, what we're talking about are the parameters that we take out of this question right here. And the parameters that we have are n, p, and q. Remember that n is our sample size of 100. p is the probability of success, which is 0 0.10. q is the probability of failure, which is 0 0.90. Because remember, I know that p plus q always have to equal 1. I know that the parameters of the normal distribution are mu, which is the mean, and of course, the standard deviation. So I'm going to use n, p, and q, apply the formula for the mean and the standard deviation of a binomial distribution, and then proceed. All right, so first thing that we're going to, to do is to find the mean of the binomial, which is found by n. found n times p, so it's 100 times 0 0.10, it's going to give me a mean of 10. Now I'm going to find the standard deviation, which is simply going to be the square root of n times p times q, which is going to give me 100.10 whoops, 0.9, which is going to give me um, 9. And then in order to get the standard deviation, I'm going to take the square root of 9, which is going to be 3. So all I did here was transform the binomial parameters into the parameters of the normal distribution. So now what I know is I have a normal distribution with a mean equal to 10 and a standard deviation equal to 3. Now I'm going to move on to number 2. I'm going to apply a continuity correction factor to the discrete variable. The discrete variable in this problem is 10. What's the probability that a person will find more than 10 clovers? In All right, now what we know is that we have a discrete random variable of 10 that has to now be transformed using a continuity correction factor um, to make it into a continuous random variable. So what I know is that the random discrete variable of 10 is actually going to fall right on the mean. But I'm going to move it. I know that it belongs right there, but I'm going to move it here so that I can work with it. Right. What I also know is that 
I can't solve for a discrete variable on a continuous distribution. I want to know what's the probability a person will find more than 10. Well, that means we don't want to include 10, so that would normally mean that we, in binomial, we would want to start with 11, 12, on up to 100. But because of the way that we're going to do this and make it a continuous random variable, what I need to do is I need to make sure that when I calculate my probability, I exclude 10. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a continuity correction factor. And I'm actually going to start at x equals 10.5. You can use a continuity correction factor table. What we know is the continuity correction is always either a plus or minus 0 0.50. So you could have looked up this inequality right here, greater than. The table would have told you that it meant it, that you need to add 0.5 to it. Or you could have reasoned that because 10 was a discrete variable, we didn't want to include it because the problem said more than, more, more than 10, that we were going to have to go above. And now what we want to do is we want to solve for the probability that a person finds more than 10, which means I'm going to solve for this area of the curve. All right, so now I've applied a continuity correction factor, and I've taken it from 10 to 10 and a half, because I remember I wanted the probability person will find more than 10. And so now that I have x transformed into 10 and a half, I'm going to calculate a z-score based on this new now continuous variable x. And I'm going to use that by using the traditional z-score formula, which is simply z equals x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And in this case, I'm now going to use 10.5 as my x minus the mean of 10. We calculated based on the binomial formula the standard deviation to be 3 and I have a z-score of 0.1666 repeating so I'm going to use a z-score equal to 1.7 which I'm going to look up in the normal distribution table because I now know this x is lies 0.17 standard deviations from the mean. The normal distribution table is going to identify this area right here, but I want the probability of more than 10, so where this arrow is is what I'm going to solve for. All right, so now we know that we have the z-score of 0.17, um, which tells us that we have an area between that z-score and the mean of 0.0675, which falls right here. We knew this whole side of the curve equals 0.50, so in order to isolate this area, we just take the 0.50, subtract out the 0.0675. Which means that the probability of getting more than 10 four leaf clovers in this sample is 0.4325 or approximately 43.25%. So, what you should be able to tell at this point is that once you get past those first two steps of calculating the mean and the standard deviation, and then making a correction to this discrete variable to transform it into a continuous variable, the rest of this problem solves exactly like the rest of your normal distribution questions. Hope this helps.